Question 5 from Section 2 of the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination from the SQA. A student is investigating how the length of a wire affects its resistance, and the student connects different lengths of wire to a power supply of fixed voltage and measures the current in each length of wire. In part A, you have the measurements taken by the student are shown in the table below. You can see the length of the wires measured in metres, and you have the current, which is measured in amps. Now, using the graph paper provided, draw a graph of these measurements. You only get three marks for us. So you have to draw a graph out, and one of the hardest things about starting a graph is actually where you start a graph. Well, the length of the wire is going to go across the way like that. That's going to be along the horizontal axis, as we call it. And the current is going to go up the way, which is in the y-axis like that. So we've solved that one out then. Length of wire and current. Now, what's going to be the scale of this graph? Well, you can see for the length of wire, you're going from 0 0.20 metres to 1 metre. And you can see along here, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 big divisions, subdivided into five smaller ones. So, if you can make that 1, we'd start off here at 0. So we could start at 0 here. And each one here, we could call it point 0.1. So, that would be 0 0.1. This would be 0 0.2. That would be 0 0.3, this would be 0 0.4, that would be 0 0.5, that would be 0 0.6, that would be 0 0.7, and this would be 0 0.8, that would be 0 0.9, and that would be 1.0. So therefore, we've got the first part of our graph drawn quite well, because we've got the scale. Remember, five little boxes stand for 0 0.1, which means one little box stands for 0 0.02. And we can draw a line along like that uh, to show that that's going to be our axis complete like that. Now, what about up the way? Well, up the way is going to be much the same because you can see from the current column, you have got a range of currents from 0 0.32 minimum up to 0 0.94. There's not much difference between the range of numbers. So we'll do the same thing again for the current. We'll start at 0 and we'll go up to 0 0.1 and call that 0 0.2, 0 0.3 call that 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and we've got one up the top. I'm missing out the ones in here because I know it's going to clutter my graph, so I'm keeping it nice and tidy. So once again, I can just draw in the axis, and we now have got a graph ready to go. Now, when plotting the graph, it's very important you take one step at a time. So we're going to plot 0 0.2 with 0 0.94 of a current. So we go to 0 0.2, and the really best way to get a ruler for this, put your ruler at 0 0.2, and we're going to go up to 0 0.94. So there's 0 0.9 there. And remember, each little square stands for 2 beyond that. So 0 0.92 and 0 0.94 would be there. So there's our first point like that. Then we're going to do the next point, and that is 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. So we take our pen again, and we go up, uh, go to 0 0.4, which is here, and 0 0.66. So 0 0.6, 62, 64, 66. And we're going to get a point in there, make a nice sharp point like that. We move on to our next one. 0 0.60 and 0 0.7, 0 0.47. So we take our graph, check again, 0 0.6 is this line here, all the way up to 0 0.47. There's 0 0.4 there, 0 0.47 would be 2, 4, 6, and halfway between there would be 0 0.47. So there's a point halfway between that little box there like that. So the graph's coming down. Uh, second last one would be this one here. 0 0.80 and 0 0.37. So we go to a graph, 0 0.80, and we go up to 0 0.37, there's 0 0.3 there, and the 0 0.7 makes up 2, uh, 2, 4, 6, and the 7 in there gives us 0 0.37. So there's a point in there. And finally, our last one, so we're nearly there, would be 1 and 0 0.32. So we go to 1, one across, one length, one metre, length of wire, and 0 0.32 amps. There's 0 0.2 here, there's 0 0.3, and it's 0 0.32, which means just one square above. So there is a point there like that. 
So we've now plotted our data on the graph and all we have to do now is draw in our line. Now we can check right away that it's not going to be a straight line because there's those first two points there, they're in line, but the other three points veer off. So it's definitely a curve. So what we have to do is take our pencil and draw through the lines in a perfect curve if we can draw that, passing through all those points which we've drawn on our graph. Now it's quite hard for me to do that on a computer, so I've got to draw one which I did earlier in the true sense of the words. And there it is there. That's the graph that I got from there. So from that graph, we can see a story being told. We can see that as the length of the wire increases, then the current in the circuit is going to decrease. And the question which comes after that is this one here. It says 5A part 2, state whether the resistance of the wire increases, decreases or stays the same as the length of the wire increases. Well, we know from our graph that definitely as the length of the wire increases, so length increases, we can read off our graph, the story of our graph, that as the length increases, then that implies that the currents which is flowing through the wire, current I, is going to decrease. Now we also know Ohm's law. Ohm's law is that the resistance R, R equals V, the voltage of the supply, or the voltage across the wire, divided by the current I. We can rearrange that, and we can see quite clearly that, well, we don't have to rearrange it, we can see that resistance R equals V divided by I. And the V part... The voltage is going to be remain the same. It's going to be constant. So we can freeze that number there. So if you look at that equation now, then we can see that as the current decreases, you're dividing the voltage by a smaller number, which means the resistance is going to increase. So as I decreases, that implies that the resistance R will increase. So there's your statement. As the length of the wire increases, the resistance will increase because the current is decreasing and because resistance equals voltage divided by current and we're keeping the voltage the same then if we divide by a smaller number, smaller current we're going to get a bigger value for R, a bigger resistance therefore the resistance will increase. Question 5a part 3 Use your graph to predict the current in a 0.5 ohmmeter length of wire when connected to the power supply. So you go to 0 0.5 metres, which is going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.5, there's 0 0.5 metres there, draw up till you touch the graph, and then you go across and read off what the corresponding current will be. Now I can look at that current in the graph, and I can see it's going to be 0 0.4, 0 0.5, two squares up, so 0 0.52, 0 0.54, and it's about half a square up, so that's going to be a 1, so 0 0.55. So from our graph, it would appear that the answer would be 0 0.55 amps from the graph. Question 5, part A, part 4. Suggest one way in which the experimental procedure could be improved to give more reliable results. Well, there's various ways you can do this, and it just says state one of them. So one would be use more different lengths of wire. Rather than use five lengths of wire, as then done in the first experiment, you can maybe use ten different lengths of wire, and that would give you more data to work on. Another idea is to repeat the experiment three times. Record the three sets of current readings for each length of wire and then find the average current through each length of wire. Then you are ironing out any little uncertainties or errors you have made. And your final table would look something like this. You can see you'd have the length 0 0.2, 0 0.4 all the way down to your complete set of lengths. You would measure the first currents and the second current all that all the way down. Then you would repeat the experiment again and measure the current through the point 0.2, the point 0.4, the point 0.6. Then you would repeat the experiment again and measure it through point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.6. So for each length of wire, you'd have three different currents which you've measured through it, and then you'd find the average of it. So you'd find the average of point 0.94, point 0.92, point 0.96, and record that in the average column. And then when it came to drawing the graph, you'd plot the length, 0 0.2, 
and the average current this time 0.94. And what I'm going to do will be to record your data on a spreadsheet and to make sure that the graph is accurately drawn you could use some software package like that and that would give you a more accurate curve through your data so there's kind of three examples you would use in order to make your experiment results more reliable question five continued part b a length of the wire with a resistance of 5.2 ohms is then folded into a rectangular shape and the ends are joined together an ohmmeter is connected across the wire between the points X and point Y as shown. And we've got to state whether the reading on the ohmmeter would be less than, equal to or greater than 5.2 ohms. And you must justify your answer. Well, let's think about it in this way. We start off with a long line of wire, which we know is going to be 5.2 ohms. That's going to be the resistance of the wire. Now, imagine us taking some wire cutters to that and cutting it exactly in the middle. Then we'd have two wires like that. And as long as the resistance per unit length is the same, we now have effectively half the resistance. So each of these little small bits of wire is going to be half the 5.2, which is going to be 2.6 ohms each. So we have 2.6 and 2.6 ohms. Now imagine further what we do. We imagine bending the wire into a goalpost shape and this one into a wire and a goal post shape, and they're going to be still have a resistance value of 2.6 ohms each. Now imagine me taking down the goal post one here and joining it together, and then connecting my ohm meter across it. Then what I really have here then is I've got a 2.6 ohm length of wire from here round to here in parallel with another 2.6 ohm length of wire. How do I know it's in parallel? Well, imagine the electricity, the electric current coming through here, coming to this junction here, and if it's forced to split up, these two branches must be parallel. So when we've got two resistors in parallel of the same value, the combined resistance is just really half of that, which is 1.3 ohms. So yes, indeed, the resistance of the rectangle between X and Y will be lower than 5.2 ohms. In fact, it'll be 1.3 ohms, as we'll describe by that method. So we have our piece of wire, and we have our ohmmeter, and we have our two leads of wire. And we connect the two leads of wire across together to get the connecting lead resistance which is 1.4 ohms. That's very important because any resistance we find after that, we have to subtract 1.4 ohms from it. So the resistance of the wires is 1.4 ohms. Now we take our length of resistance wire, which is nichrome from a toaster, and we find the total resistance of the complete length of the wire. And as you can see from the meter, the total resistance settles down to give you a value of about 5. Well, about 5.8 is the total resistance of the wire. But remember, we have to subtract that 1.4 ohms from it. Uh, the full wire resistance, uh, take away the 1.4 ohms, gives me the real wire resistance is 4.4 ohms. Now what we've got to do is fashion the length of straight wire into a loop and connect uh, each end of the loop with the leads coming from the ohmmeter. So there's one connected there and one connected there. So you can see this time that the resistance of the loop is now going to drop down to give you a value of about 2.6 ohms. There it is there, so the value is 2.6. But remember, we've got to subtract the resistance of the connecting leads, which is 1.4 ohms. So that's going to give us a total of 1.2 ohms for the real resistance of the loop. And you can see it's almost a quarter of the original resistance of the wire.
it can be very hard to draw a curve line on a graph. The best idea is to take your ruler, and it must be a flexible ruler, and just bend it as best you can with three fingers, a thumb, two fingers and a thumb, along where all the points are. And once you've got that like there, you just take a pencil and draw along the ruler. You've got the curve like that. Quite a good method to draw a good curve.